Hey YouTube, Joy Boy here. So, chapter 898 of One Piece is out. So if you haven't checked out that chapter yet, I suggest that you do so because I will be spoiling you. Now that you have, let's begin. This is another chapter which I am enjoying, but depending on sort of how things may play out, I may look back on and enjoy it less. But one thing above anything else really stood out to me as something that is worthy of discussion. It's something that people have been talking about for a very long time, and I'll be honest with you that I have for the most part dismissed, but it was really emphasized in this chapter, and that is people have been complaining about the portrayal of the Big Mom Pirate. And so some of you out there might say, Joy Boy, how have you dismissed this? You made a video specifically about it recently and several times in the past. And to be as blunt as possible, guys, I am fine with the portrayal of the Big Mom Pirates as long as it's integral to the story going forward. But otherwise, it should be very off-putting that a Yonko and, and her crew are being treated in this way. We are talking about one of the four greatest pirates on the oceans. And so before, I think that you could easily look past all of the various ways in which they failed as due to chance or circumstance or make some excuse. But in this chapter, Oda put an exclamation point on the fact that we should be thinking that the Big Mom Pirates are inept. This chapter conveyed an overwhelming sense that the Big Mom Pirates are flawed and overall left me with the impression that we should be looking down on them. And I think that regardless of your opinion about this, I think that this is something that needs to be discussed and understood. Because it is so contrary to our expectation of the Yonko's role in the story, as compared to every other Yonko that we have seen. I know that there still exists many various trains of thought, but if you want to believe that the Big Mom Pirates will be enemies again in the story, they need, at this point, they need some major redemption. Oda needs to completely flip the script to what she's currently setting up for them. But even if something like this does occur, you will have a lot of people within the community calling it asshole, calling it, you know, plot armor or convenience or whatnot. That, oh, conveniently, the Big Mom, the overpowered Big Mom pirates were exposed in every possible way, only by Luffy, because they needed to escape. And then later on, Oda sort of retracts everything that he set up about their ineptitude. I've said this before and I'll say this again, at this time, the only way that I really see the story of the Big Mom Pirates going in a direction that I think most people would enjoy is if Oda delved into their inner workings and their problems and moved the story forward in such a way to resolve these problems. Basically, I hope that there is an overarching point for the current portrayal of the Big Mom Pirates. That the reason why the Big Mom Pirates look bad in the story is so that they themselves can realize their problems and be able to grow from this realization. Let's be real, the Big Mom Pirates have been betrayed by their own crew members on several occasions in this arc. Pudding isn't happy being there, Katakuri is not happy being there, Chiffon and Lola clearly were not happy being there. Peckham's right now a loyal subordinate and is fighting for the strides. There seems to be a lack of organization and structure within the crew itself. Certainly they have a ton of very strong members, but without Big Mom in the picture, they don't seem to know how to use their pieces. And it's clear at this time that Oda is definitely selling the idea that despite clear flaws, they are completely unaware of these flaws and overconfident in their abilities. But of course, the source of most of these problems, at least in my opinion, is Big Mom's rage itself being unable to lead her crew, and perhaps never instilling in them the ability to lead themselves. I know that for a lot of people, it's very counterintuitive, and a lot of people say that, you know, JB, this arc is ending, and it's just, it is what it is, you just gotta accept that. But I am still a firm believer that the only real way that Oda can take this story from here, for the Big Mom Pirates, is for all the various conflicts within the Big Mom Pirates itself to be resolved. But at the very least, guys, I think that you should be looking at the way that the Big Mom Pirates are being portrayed and think to yourself that this is very strange. And it is the perfect setup to have very unexpected things occur. Because for a lot of people, what was expected would be some sort of major antagonistic role for the Big Mom Pirates, some sort of major clash in the future of the story. But as of right now, it is not setting up to be that way. The Big Mom Pirates do not look like major antagonists. 
As I've said on multiple occasions, they look more like a group that is in need of help. But I guess to talk more specifically about the fights that we got to see in this chapter, first off, I want to talk about the Vinsmoke. The way that Oda drew the scenes with the Vinsmoke showing them off was incredibly impressive and beautiful. Like, I love those panels so much. They had a lot of power to them. And straight up, EGG versus Oven. It, like, I, I can't describe the feeling that I got from the panel other than complete domination. EGG made Oven look bad. It's like just on the border or the boundary of being a one-shot. But I think that we should be fair to Oven in this situation and keep in context everything that happened before this. This to me is very similar to all the various arguments surrounding uh, when, when fighters lose, when just before they get attacked or defeated or whatever ends up happening, they get distracted. Oda made a point just before Oven attacked Sanji and then got intercepted by EGG to reveal all this information about how the Big Mom Pirates were taken completely unawares, that they had underestimated their opponent, many of their crewmates had lost, including Katakuri, who was undefeated for his entire life. And it is very clear that Oven was shaken. I think you could say that Oven might have been distracted in a kind of a different way. Maybe the thing that I would compare this most closely to is when Luffy saw Katakuri eating. And that allowed Luffy an opportunity to get attacks in on Katakuri. And I have no doubt that when Oda was rationalizing this fight, I think that he used this as, as further justification for Ichiji catching Oven the way that he did. But I'll be honest guys, I don't power scale often, but it was well within my expectations for somebody like Ichiji to be capable of defeating Oven. I think the most surprising thing is just the way that he did it. I do think that the fight would have played out a lot differently had one, Oven been focused on the threat of the Vinsmoke, and two, had not been completely consumed by the notion of getting revenge on Sanji and Luffy because of the reveal that Luffy defeated Katakuri. Basically, it would have been a different fight if Oven hadn't been distracted. There's something to be said about fighting with a calm mind. And I think the other really noteworthy fight of this chapter, or, you know, action sequence, was with Sanji and carrying Luffy and Niji. Basically, Niji said that Sanji was slow, and Oda displayed Niji's speed, which was incredible. Basically, uh, Sanji didn't look so great, and Niji looked amazing. And so a lot of people aren't really happy with this, and I think that this is also due to the frustrations of, you know, Sanji not looking particularly great in fights for a long time now. And so guys, like with a lot of things in this arc, it doesn't upset me because I'm so patiently awaiting Sanji's moment. Like, actual fighting moment. I know a lot of people have given up hope that Sanji's going to get a fighting moment. This, this is his character arc, but that doesn't mean that he needs an epic 1v1 fight or that Oda has historically done that. But I do think that it is coming. But this chapter was focused more around the Vinsmoke and showing them off. And Oda accomplished that. This chapter can only be described as the realization that the Big Mom Pirates have completely failed. I had to read the chapter a second time to fully understand the picture of what is going on. But you have Snack and uh, several other fleet members that were supposed to stop the strides. And Sanji from getting on the ship. But they are completely distracted by the Jerma Double Six Army. We see that Oven attempts to call them via the Dindamushi, and they notice that the Dindamushis are ringing, but they can't really do much about it. They're already busy. Smoothie has fallen behind, deciding to wait rather than chase them, because she thought that she was going to prevent their only way of escaping, which would be backwards. And obviously, Oven on the island itself failed. So as of right now, these strats have a clear window of opportunity of escape. The Big Mom Pirates are shocked and reeling. Whatever morale that they had before the last few chapters is gone. And as of right now, Oda is making us think that for the Big Mom Pirates to succeed in stopping uh, Luffy and the Strats escape would require a miracle. The only possible hope that they have at this time is if Snack has somehow managed to catch up to the Strats uh, on the Sunny. We didn't get to see him in this chapter at all. He's the last line of defense, possible defense, for the Big Mom Pirates. But saying everything that I have just said right now, guys, I still have complete confidence, or I have the belief in, that Oda is just about to surprise us. And the most ominous clue which suggests this is that Big Mom has yet to eat the cake. This is a basic rule of writing, but when you take the time to set something up, and you devote 30 chapters in anticipation for it occurring, 
then you have to deliver with some huge payoff to the readers having waited for it. And so you can define the last 30 or so chapters as us really anticipating and waiting for the climactic battle of Luffy vs Katakuri which has been resolved and Big Mom eating the cake which has not. I don't think that Oda is going to disappoint us with the cake. There is just way too much setup involving the cake and all these circumstances surrounding it for it not to be a moment that Oda envisioned his readers enjoying. Basically, Big Mom is going to eat the cake and something unexpected is going to occur. And so this is the way I think about it, guys. What could possibly happen after Big Mom eats the cake? It's very, very unlikely to be exactly as Oda has set up would occur. The simple, straightforward explanation for what will occur after Big Mom eats the cake is she will pass out. Thus removing her threat from the arc. That's, that's the expectation that Oda is creating and we should be very skeptical of. And so ignoring this as a possibility, all you're left with are things that are going to elongate this arc. If the purpose of Big Mom eating the cake is not to remove her as a threat in this arc and allow for everyone to escape because, you know, as we can see right now, they would have escaped irregardless of what ends up happening with Big Mom eating the cake. Then Big Mom eating the cake has to do something else for the story. And I am still excited for the many possibilities that that may bring. But I think that the biggest question that this, this idea brings up is, well, the Strats can escape. It seems as though they are about to escape. So if something ends up happening with Big Mom over in a place that they don't care about, then what will keep them here in Whole Cake Island? This thought also has me extremely excited. I think that the most exciting thoughts that I have shared up until this point in time are the Strats actually do manage to escape the Big Mom Pirates and then run into a Marine Buster Call which Stussy has organized, knowing everything that's going on in Whole Cake Island. Secondly, it would be very interesting if an island completely explodes. The alcohol island with Big Mom being on a giant ball of fire. That could catch both the Big Mom Pirates and the Strats' attention. And if you're looking for a reason for the Strats to escape, uh, the Strats could become concerned for Chiffon or Capone. Or thirdly, Big Mom is able to eat this cake, it makes her pass out, and if her powers work similarly to Sugar from Dressrosa, then that may, uh, in, in a way, undo all of Big Mom's active powers. Basically return all the, the life force that she has taken and, and put into, you know, random objects back to their hosts. Which would include everybody on Whole Cake Island. Which would again be crazy and have huge implications. Or as always, you're left with an option that you never considered, but Oda considered. And sort of in line with these same thoughts about something unexpected occurring, we should keep in mind that Peckham's has transformed into Su Long and has sacrificed himself. That was not emphasized in the slightest in this chapter, but you should still keep it in mind because it is, it's still occurring. And this is another thing which I think that Oda needs to devote more time into before this arc ends. And so the last thing that I really want to talk about is I want to talk about the Vince book. And so guys, I apologize. I promised at the end of the last reaction that I would talk more about the Vince books and why I think that there is still conflict to be had between Sanji and his siblings. But honestly, I, I attempted to record the video on several uh, occasions over the past week and it never really felt right. And that's a big reason why I didn't have many videos over the past several days is because my mind is on it and I'm trying to sort of work through how I should talk about and how I should phrase certain things to express my beliefs without, you know, looking just silly. And if I'm honest with you guys, I never really think that it's a bad idea to just wait for more information because even in this last chapter, we got to learn more, which can further justify certain thoughts or debunk other thoughts. I really do think that sometimes it's just best to do it right rather than do it quickly. But in regards to this chapter, my opinion is completely unchanged still, and it again, it only really works if this arc is elongated. If it's not elongated, then I will be very, very wrong. But uh, something that Nami said in a conversation between Nami and Jinbei in this, this chapter really caught my attention. What do you think about this? The Jerma have shown up. Are they our enemies this time or allies? Jimbei then says, do you really think that they'd come for our heads at a time like this when we're most likely to get away? And then Nami finished with, but I thought that they only agreed to be our allies temporarily. After all that's happened, how can we dot dot dot? It's very clear that the implication of what Nami is about to say is how can we trust them? I am so, so glad that Oda brought this up. This is Oda telling us with dialogue in this last chapter that we should still be thinking about the relationship between Sanji 
and his brothers. Oda is essentially confirming that I haven't given you everything that you need to know yet because you should still be skeptical of the Vince Milk's motivations and what they might do in the future. And so if I convey anything at all, it is my belief that the Vin Smoke brothers are not doing what they are doing right now for Sanji and for the Strats. They are doing it for themselves. There are two pre-established motivations that I can see. The first of which is that they do not want to be indebted to the Strats and to Sanji. So in this way, they are just paying them back because to do anything else would make them feel dirty. I'm fine with that. Oda has set up the Vinsmoke brothers to have a lot of respect for their father. Now, they do not always follow their, their father's wishes in every possible scenario, which really stands out to me. But they do seem to want to make their father happy. And Judd specifically said that he didn't want to be in the debt of Sanji. So in a way, this could be for their father. Even if someone like EGG really does not care all that much. Or the second, and I think that both of these may end up being true at the same time, is they are doing it for revenge, which has also been established in the last couple chapters. It is very clear from earlier in Whole Cake Island that the Vinsmoke brothers are motivated by revenge. We can see this after Sanji defends Cosette, and then what ends up happening? Well, it seems as though the Vinsmoke brothers conspire to get back at Sanji by attacking her. A lot of people think that it was just Niji getting back at Sanji and taking his revenge on Cosette, but I think that it was all three brothers. It should be very conspicuous to you that Yanji just happened to be waiting right around the place where Sanji found Cosette. Oh, by the way, I'm pretty sure Niji did this. Why don't I take you to him? And then Yanji proceeds to show Sanji their complete disregard for the sanctity of human life with their disposable clone soldiers. And then Sanji is jumped by not just Niji, but all three brothers. Something EGG said really caught my attention. We all thought, well, hey, maybe this is a good thing. It'll help that little grunt grow and mature a little bit. Meaning they all conspired to lead Sanji to this place. They planned to provoke Sanji by attacking Cosette and then lure him to a specified location in order to teach him a lesson and in essence enact revenge. And it's worth noting here that this revenge and their hopes potentially to attack Sanji was not what their father had wanted. So this is the setup for the event smokes being motivated for revenge. Now let's take this back to current events. Obviously straight up attacking the Big Mom Pirates is in and of itself a form of revenge. It speaks for itself. But there's also another way to look at this. And so it's kind of weird to think of saving the strats as being an, an essence revenge, but it is. The Big Mom Pirates want above anything else to capture the strats and to capture Sanji. They've repeated over the Din and Mushis, which the Vinsmokes might have been able to tap, that this is a huge disgrace. They cannot allow the strats to escape. So if the Vinsmokes are looking to get revenge on the Big Mom Pirates, obviously they could attack the Big Mom Pirates, but just as effective to attacking them is helping the Strats escape. But going back to Nami's comments about whether or not they can trust the Vinsmoke, which is implied as to what she was about to say. If they hold no love for Sanji, let's focus in on Ichiji above any of the other brothers because I think that he is the epitome of why the Vinsmokes are bad people. If everything that they are doing is not for Sanji or the Strats, but rather for revenge, then they may do some things in the future which Sanji would not appreciate. Basically, right now, the goals and objectives of the Vinsmoke and the Strats are the same, but they want them for different reasons. So my thought as to how the Vinsmokes could still be enemies after everything that is occurring right now is if one, they successfully allow the Strats to be able to escape. But as we talked about earlier in this video, for one reason or another, these strats don't escape. And as another act of revenge, the Vinsmokes attempt to capture Pudding, which is still something that I believe that Oda has set up in foreshadow. And of course, Sanji would not be okay with that, initiating some kind of confrontation, and finally allowing for the story to progress and resolve their relationship. But this is another thing which, in order for it to be possible, would require the, the Big Mom Pirates to no longer be an immediate threat. And I'm not certain if I can rationalize an easy way for that to end up happening. Only convey my thoughts about 
how we don't really know how the rest of this arc will play out. An attempt to emphasize the necessity that Sanji and his brothers still need some kind of confrontation. But yeah guys, regardless of what your thoughts are, regardless of how and in, in many various ways you could disagree with me, Nami's line in this chapter should ring to you as being very ominous. But yeah guys, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. As always, let me know what you think. Let me know if you noticed anything from this chapter that I may have missed. Just share your thoughts. Like the video if you liked the video, dislike the video if you disliked the video. Make sure to subscribe if you want to be notified for my future content. And as always guys, have a wonderful day.